Hi, I'm Garvin DeShazer. You know, we talk a lot about the value of our gifts, our native talents, and the benefits that they can produce for ourselves and for society. Today, we'll be talking about how for some people whose lives are out of balance, the expression of those gifts can come at an enormous price. Enjoy, because this is your daily inspiration. At age 20, Bobby Fischer was named the greatest chess player ever to live. At age 14, he had become the U.S. chess champion. At age 15, the youngest Grand Master. And at 20, with 11 wins in 11 games at the U.S. Championship, he achieved the only perfect score in the history of the tournament. His success was a product of both brilliance and hard work. He had prepared for one chess match by memorizing 17,000 of his opponent's moves consecutively. He could tell you exactly in which game, and which date, and what the 15th move was. Some said he played chess better than any of us will likely do anything. He was clearly a genius, but his gift came at a terrible price. In 1972, Bobby Fischer appeared on a national television show to discuss his success and strategies. He leaned back in his chair, revealing more than a hint of arrogance and feeling of intellectual superiority to the host. "'What's the moment of pleasure for you in chess?' the host asked Bobby. Bobby paused for a moment. "'When you crush his ego,' he said. He wasn't joking." and the audience shifted uncomfortably. Bobby Fischer was brilliant, but utterly incapable of forming relationships with human beings. He died in his early 60s, alone and miserable. Now, I'm not discounting the value of our gifts. I believe each of us have them. The great innovations and creative endeavors they bring I'm not suggesting we shouldn't do everything we can to discover the gifts we have and manifest them in the world. We admire the math geniuses, the sports prodigies, the chess grandmasters, and yet very often these brilliant people pay for their gifts in other ways, often to the point of death. They may be successful and wealthy, but all too often they're alone, miserable, and dysfunctional. Bobby Fischer is far from being the only one. Take the case of actor Philip Seymour Hoffman. Known for playing lowlifes, eccentrics, and misfits, he delved into his characters with a depth and intuition that sometimes frightened his viewers. He channeled the emotions of his characters to such a degree that he seemed to become them. Now, the Hollywood establishment showered him with high praise and countless awards. But he was miserable. The same sensitivity that fueled his raw emotional portrayals fostered a deep despair that ended in drug addiction, and eventually it came to kill him. In a similar vein, Robin Williams was an extraordinarily creative, spontaneous man. He could do off-the-cuff comedy better than anyone on the planet. With his over-the-top humor and lightning-fast thinking, he gained a reputation that most agents couldn't resist. Yet over time, he plunged into deep depression. He became increasingly desperate for attention, and his humor grew darker. Eventually, he killed himself. And the list goes on and on. The underlying problem is that they and we don't feel loved. When we don't feel loved for who we really are, we're in excruciating pain, and in turn, our gifts become not only blunted, but they become weapons. Take creativity. When we're in pain, we use our creativity to form clever lies, creative ways to run, to sabotage, and to distract ourselves. When we feel loved, we use our creativity to find out-of-the-box solutions to problems and to foster original ideas. How about boldness? 
when we're in pain, we use our boldness to intimidate people, control them, and get angry. We pursue excitement such as fast driving and gambling. We become reckless. But when we feel loved, we use our boldness to take necessary risks, to fearlessly point out the destructive behaviors of others, and to tell the starkest truths about ourselves. And then there's keen memory. When we're afraid, in fear, we use our keen memory to recall in vivid detail the most painful experiences of our lives. We hold others emotionally hostage with their past iniquities. When we feel loved, we use our keen memory to recall important life lessons as we need them and to retrieve and integrate multiple sources of data and to remember those times of joy in our lives. What about tenderness? When we're in pain, our tenderness makes us hypersensitive to the actions and words of others. It tends to increase our shame and guilt and makes us more likely to use addictive behaviors. When we feel loved, our tenderness allows us to feel everything more deeply, gratitude, joy, and peace, and to sense the emotions of others more readily, to create deeper connections and bonds with them. What about our talents? When we're in pain, we use our talents to show off, to get attention, and to win the conditional approval of as many people as possible. But when we feel loved, we use our talents to entertain, to uplift, and to serve others. In short, when we feel loved, our gifts become powerful tools to do great good. When we feel afraid, our gifts become deadly weapons. The solution to our pain is to find the love we need to be happy. When we feel completely loved and accepted to our bones, that knowledge banishes fear. And then, who we are naturally emerges. We don't have to work to find ourselves as though digging to uncover some archaeological artifact. In our peace and confidence, we simply discover our natural abilities and interests, and those gifts come out in everything we do. Work then becomes fun. And isn't that the real gift in life? What will you do to find the love you need and uncover who you really are? What choices will you make to use your gifts for good rather than weapons of defense? Will you say, I am designed to express my gifts as I am designed to love and allow who you are to reveal itself today? Thanks for listening. May your day be filled with love, laughter, and joy. Bye for now. Hi, this is Scott, producer for the Daily Inspirations podcast. We hope you're enjoying these stories, and if you'd like more inspiration in your life, visit MyDailyIAm.com. You can find weekend blog posts, sign up for our email update list, and you can let us know about an inspirational story you'd like us to cover. Or just say hi. We'd love to hear from you.